Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's after the close on October 8th, 2012. Before we get started, I just want to remind you that the website and this video are for educational purposes only. And nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional, just a guy that draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. Okay, we're starting off here with a five-minute chart. You know, I made mention in the uh, weekly uh, review that we just don't have one of those nice big patterns that we can trade on right now. We're, we're stuck with this channel. And it's hard sometimes to know exactly what, what path... Uh, the market may make as it goes from the bottom to the top of the channel. Sometimes you fail to get to the top and that kind of signals the end, but you don't know until um, you, you, you uh, typically get a return to the bottom line after a failed move to reach the top. It is possible that uh, that's what we're dealing with right here, but not I'm not totally sold on that idea. And the reason I'm not is because we broke out over this line right here. And if you look at this as potentially being something of an inverted head and shoulders continuation pattern, which I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. So that, that, that would be a bad on me. If that's what we're getting here, then we end up with a target that would be well above where the market is today. And if I can scoot this chart around just a little bit, you can see that um, if this does act as an inverted head and shoulders continuation pattern, then we should be looking for something in the low 1480s. Um, and you can see that we got up to 1470, then started to sell back. So here's the deal. Um, this is looking a little potentially bare, flaggish. Um, it's it's not looking horribly so because it's not pointing up to in in much of a direction. Typically, have we been seeing a lot of um, um, little rising wedges when when we get a pattern like this? But the, but. You know, I, we're so close to this orange line down here that is the broken resistance line for the past, uh, how long has it been? Well, it's been about it, it, about three weeks this line served as resistance. We broke above it uh, late last week, and a back test to this line would not be out of the ordinary. So it wouldn't surprise me if tomorrow... We, we backed up. We got a little bit more room. Let's put it this way. We got a little bit more room to back up. Okay? Then, let's see if we get a bounce. Because if we get a good bounce, then, then I'm thinking that that could set up that move to about 1482. Um, what else is going on here? Well, it, it could be also... And I'm sorry, I'm being a little wishy-washy. Just while we're in between the, these these uh, channel lines, like I said, it's just hard to say, and this is the path we're going to take. Because back here early on, we bounced in between these lines quite a bit. Then we hugged the top line, went sideways, came up, broke out over, the, over this channel just a little bit, sideways, came down, sideways. Now it looks like we're on, in potentially um, breaking out to go back up but let me show you one thing here if we look at where we made our daily lows today you can see that that corresponds with the exact level of the breakout over that descending line so uh, I, I I'm just gonna be I'm gonna shoot straight with you I always shoot straight with you that might hold it might not okay we're still looking at the same thing 
in the intermediate term. And I, I know I've been kind of, uh, what, what would they say, Johnny One Note? You know, that's the kid you went to school with who, who can only sing in a monotone. And uh, so I feel a little bit like I'm uh, being a bit monotonous now. You know, I wish I had some more exciting news for you. But while this channel is working, I think we just have to let it continue to work. And uh, until this bottom line breaks, I don't think there's any reason to, to think that we are now in a down leg. When it does break, and if we get a, a little bit more of a, you know, if we get a significant break of this, of this green line, then a uh, lower green line, then I think that's likely uh, um, the beginning of the end of this uh, nice move up in this channel. And the reason I say it's probably the beginning to the end is because when you, when you see these turns, they don't always just go uh, up in the channel, break the channel, and then we're gone. A lot of times there's a little bit more dynamic action that takes place at tops. It's not always just a singular event. Now, when you are inside these channels, it can be a singular event. You can break out from the bottom, go up here, make a flag, then go up. There. I mean, what happened? Well, it went straight there. Then we go sideways. Then what happened? Well, we pretty much came down to the bottom of the channel. And now it looks like, again, we may be heading for the upside again. But if this line does break, if, if this uh, lower green channel line does break, it would not surprise me to see an initial bounce down here, you know, at, at this support level, around the somewhere around 1432 1433 and then see maybe another decent rally that may serve as a back test and what does that do well we've seen it before we break a channel and and, and I'm not saying it's going to break this time but if it does you break the channel you bounce back for a back test and you come back down to test that support line again and then this becomes like a little triple top so you see what I'm saying. I think most of the times we have had patterns break in the S&P, there's usually been a secondary uh, point at which a person could get out of the market and do so without having uh, cost himself much. For example, uh, back here on this head and shoulders, this, this trend line broke at the head. And then it came down and then rallied back actually over the level that was that uh, of where that channel broke. It rallied back to, uh, you know, a good 10, 15 points over that level, which would have been a good opportunity to, to perhaps see the handwriting on the wall and say, you know, that's a good spot to get out. And then, look, you could have um, could have saved yourself a lot of pain, you could have saved yourself about 100 points of pain. You know, if if you had made that move and you can see that there was uh, other other things pointing to that. Well, I've got to go to a four hour chart. Come on, come on. You can see that we had our little. Um, hold on. Let's just look at it here because the lines got all wonky. You had this little tiny triple top that formed the head of this, uh, the top of the head of this pattern. When that broke down, you then rallied back to the neckline of that little triple top. And what did I say we might be making here? Again, it's a guess at this point, but this could be a little triple top. All I'm saying is... We need to watch this. I don't think it's going to be a situation where the channel breaks and then all hell breaks loose. I think the channel will break and then there'll be a back test more than likely when this line breaks. And I think that'll be a good opportunity um, for the market to have telegraphed where it's going to go, come back uh, to test that broken line. And, and if that is the case, that is a good spot. To, to take action. If you're long, it's a good spot to, to, 
to us uh, take profits. If, if you're looking to go short, that's a pretty good spot to go short. So guys, we're, we're in the really, really the same situation as we were over the weekend. And that is the only thing that happened today was we had a little continuation of, uh, of, of uh, Friday's weakness after that initial response to the, uh, to the jobs numbers. And now we're coming back down. Again, we've come back and, and looks like maybe trying to bounce here right at that breakout level. That could hold. If it doesn't, then I would expect a move tomorrow uh, to, to back test this orange line that would be in the high 1440s. And if that happens, I still wouldn't panic. I would expect a bounce there. If it starts to break, then, then that's the end of the, that could that that could be signaling the end of this channel. And like I said, all of this as we look back in retrospect, at some point, something just tells me. Maybe it's intuitive. I don't know, but something tells me that all of this in retrospect could be setting up um, a reversal pattern. But but it it will not be that. Until we break this channel line, then we see if we get a back test, and then if we come back down, you, you see what I'm saying. So these things take time to develop. It's, it's, it's not like something that you just say, well, tomorrow we're going to go down 3%. It's not like that. It would be something like to where you could say, perhaps at some point in even probably... I'm just looking at the scale of things here. We're looking about potentially a topping pattern that starts to reveal itself um, potentially even right after the elections. Now I know that that's going to sound kind of stupid quite frankly. Um, the elections can be market movers. So I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to make any bold proclamation that the market goes up or down with the election. Um, I, I will say I think if Romney wins, the market likely will rally. If Obama wins, I think the market just might say, "Screw it!" You know, we, we, we've been we've we've been going up for four years, but um, but you know we've been going up against that backdrop of fear, against the backdrop, frankly, of a of a really poor economy. So uh, if since we're up so close to that. 1500 level now I just don't know how much more of of uh, of a of a, a a lackluster economy the markets can handle they've done extremely well despite the economy but uh, and, and you know that that's not atypical for those of you who who are contrarians know that bull markets often take place when things are really sketchy when things are really iffy it's you get the tops when things look perfect. So so I'm going to stick with my with my overall idea that the market is is probably going to be toppy regardless of who wins. But I think who wins might adjust the timing of when that top reveals itself and exactly how that works out. So for right now, I am short term uh, a little optimistic. That we will get a bounce at uh, at a back test of this line, and we may see the markets head on up to the to the 1480s or even as high as 1500 if they want to get back up to this uh, resistance line in this rising channel. So, all of this to say, what I've been saying, watch this green line. That's going to be the shot across the bow that tells us uh, that. At least for the for the short term and probably intermediate term, um, the party's over. Look, guys, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch the video. I especially want to thank uh, my subscribers. I I I, I uh, accidentally chopped the weekend uh, video off right at the end of the technical analysis part and and missed the opportunity to <coughs> to thank people for watching that. So. If you watch the weekend uh, weekly review, thank you for doing that. 
and a thank you for being a subscriber to SP500Chart.com, where we use time-honored techniques to understand modern markets, featuring daily technical analysis videos of the S&P 500 Index. Take good care.